This podcast is part of a series called Voices for Change, initiated by Ecosia Coop for its 30 years anniversary. In each episode, a voice of an expert or key actor in a domain related to Ecosia's actions and commitments shares its vision and invites us to change ours. All of them are generous advocates of ways and actions that can lead to a sustainable world. In front of the complexity of the task, they share with us some reassuring landmarks, tools, and experiences, and we hope that their voices will resonate with you. If I say organic agriculture and women's empowerment, few people see the connection. However, the program set up by Usha Sulapani, director of the Tunnel Trust in Kerala, India, shows an indeniable cause and effect relationship. And that's not all. If you are interested in learning more about the Indian food system, the evolution of local communities through organic farming, and the food issues in one of the world's most populous continent countries, then you will love listening to this interview. So, welcome, Usha Sulapani. Please, can you present your professional career in three key moments? I am a postgraduate in horticulture from Kerala Agriculture University. I have experience in working with the government uh, as an agricultural extension officer. Then uh, I worked on Western Ghats conservation program, did uh, environmental education. And in the last two decades, I am doing research and then community work on organic farming and agroecology, developing this sector. How and when did you meet organic agriculture in your professional career? Uh, actually, uh, I, during my post-graduation, I came to know about this concept. Uh, but it took another uh, 10-15 years for me to understand and learn this as a profession. Then in the last two decades, since 2020, I am actually working on it. Can you first tell us to what extent the Indian population has access to adequate or even quality food? India, uh, as everybody know, India is the second most populated country. We are producing enough, actually, you know, especially rice, wheat, vegetables, uh, similarly milk, pulses, millets. Even then, a lot of people population, especially the rural poor, they are not able to get uh, good food, the adequate food. That's a reality. We have a Food Security Act in India. But even then, the uh, problem is that although there is production, procurement by the government is still very low. And only very few products are procured by the government for distribution among the rural or the poor population through the public distribution system. The rest, every, for everything, the people have to depend on the market. So it depends on the, the poverty among the population um, is also quite high in India. So it is for them, it's very difficult to purchase you know, uh, all this, uh, whatever the kind of food which is actually needed. So that's an issue. Another problem is that even though uh, the production is very high, 30 percentage is getting wasted because of uh, lack of facilities for storage and then uh, infrastructure, especially at the grassroots level. So uh, quite a population, um, like a 14 percentage, according to statistics, of the population is undernourished in India. 30 percent is really huge. Can you give us your vision of a sustainable food system for India? What should it be? As I said, India uh, is an agriculture country with uh, quite uh, like 60 percentage of the population is uh, in farming even now. And out of that, 80 percentage of the farmers are small and marginal farmers. So my vision of a sustainable food system would be taking care of their welfare, their needs their sustenance. Uh, that would be my first priority. Secondly, my vision of sustainable food system is actually ensuring or cultivating and ensuring the food diversity. India is well known for food diversity. We have 
a large number of uh, different agroecological zones with the different kinds of cropping systems and food culture so the food diversity and food culture should be uh, a primary objective or the uh, that is in my vision keeping that intact uh, that is a sustainable food system thirdly organic farming agroecology uh, because india uh, in the last uh, 50 years have gone ahead with the green revolution chemical fertilizer pesticides and uh, it has actually impacted our environment our food everything so a transition to organic farming based on ecological agroecological factors would be the ideal uh, sustainable for, for sustainable food system in india and uh, one important aspect in the whole thing is localization localization of production and consumption as much as possible so in that building the value chain you know from seed to food at the local level is very very important which will take care of many things one is it will reduce the wastage it will create more employment and it will actually enhance uh, the income and the welfare of the local community um what should we do what should the indian people should do uh, to meet those targets by which leverages which drivers uh actually uh, the government has to invest more in farmers and also uh, organic farming agroecology because right now the policy is still towards uh, conventional chemical based agriculture including research you now by the mainstream institutions are still even uh, based on the chemical the, the earlier the green revolution policy so that has to change so one uh, india needs a lot of uh, research and development on the bio inputs bio uh, uh, pest control which is especially because in the last 30 years 30 35 years the organic farming was developed by the farmers and by by the civil society mostly and in the last uh, maybe 10 20, 20 years uh, state governments are getting into it but even then to change the uh, larger mainstream uh, agriculture into organic it needs a lot of investment in terms of money and in terms of supporting the farmers at the grassroots level and also again building the market for uh, such products uh, so slowly it is happening but the we feel that the speed with which it is happening is still very low but in the last two years there is more uh, central government fund is slowly getting into uh, natural farming agroecology and all but another thing is uh, the public awareness especially among the consumers about the food and the health is very very important so a lot of awareness program among the consumers is also needed so that they will be able to understand the value of organic farming and the food and also the fact that uh, now right now there is a huge disconnect between the farmers and the consumers that also need to be reduced so that is where you now the local local development of the food system is very very important so there all these places investment uh, mine, uh, resources is needed um, what do you tell people supporting conventional agriculture in india Uh, we tell them that one is it is not sustainable in the long term both ecologically and economically uh, why because uh, in the last uh, 50 years of agriculture development in india everybody says you no know, production has gone up but what we see in india is that farmers are either dying or they are quitting farming a large population is moving away from farming so if the farming is economically viable farmers need not quit farming so that is not the reality so in a way it is to make the farming economically viable and ecologically sustainable it is very very important to change the practices and another important aspect is uh, the conventional farmers are by using the kind of chemicals toxic chemicals they are in a sense poisoning the land and the food which is very very unfortunate so we tell them that if if one is, if, if they are ready to change the practice the poisoning can be avoided but 
uh, we realize that no that they cannot do it alone it needs a support of the uh, society and that is where the consumers have to understand the problems of farmers and they need to be supported uh, so conventional farmers uh, another issue is the the recent issue is the climate change that is also we keep telling them because uh, agriculture is impacted by climate change but the current conventional agriculture is also contributing to climate change so unless the farmers are ready to change the practices especially on the chemical fertilizers like nitrogen fertilizers and also use of fossil fuels all these are contributing to climate change so how the conventional farmers can contribute to mitigation by reducing the kind of uh, use of these resources and also in turn in turn uh, like uh, get more uh, adaptation possibilities because uh, there are a lot of experience in kerala in india that uh, farmers who have shifted to organic farming agroecology are able to adapt more well the, to the the changing changes in the climate especially the drought condition the, because there is in the intensity of drought is increasing in india so in such places like andhra pradesh maharashtra in many places dry regions the organic farmers are actually showing a lot of success uh, so we are actually showing such pra- uh, models to the conventional farmers perfect uh, i would like now to ask you uh, some question about the incredible project you are implementing in kerala can you tell us about the work you did in kerala on the revival of farming by women actually when we started organic farming in kerala uh, that was back in 2000 2001 we started actually this uh, project with the women farmers very small you no know, they were mostly landless farmers at that time uh, so then we trained them on organic farming the principles and then some methods and they started like there were around uh, 25 30 women and uh, they were part of self help group in india it is well known the self help group uh, it started long back uh, as part of the rural eradication program rural poverty poverty eradication program by the government so in kerala also uh, we have a mi- mission called kudumbashree mission which is uh, basically uh, empowering women to ira- to in a sense to eradicate poverty at the family level and at the community level so the women are, women were already organized by this mission uh, kudumbashree mission which is a part of the government but they were mostly getting training on other things like uh, umbrella making you know the soap making those kind of stuff but uh, when we were approached by these women who told us that they are interested in farming so that is where we actually started working with so actually they they approached us it is not that we went ahead you know uh, in search of the farmers but they came to us and uh, we started this program and later interestingly so we continue to work with the women farmers but the government also especially this mission kudumbashree mission in the last 10 years Uh, they got to this uh, expansion of uh, farming with these groups uh, because most of this as i said before most of these women under the kudumbashree mission are landless people that is it's a really poor uh, people in the in, uh, in the state so then they when they started uh, initially with a few uh, groups the, the the government itself realized the potential and we could also work with the uh, with them again with the kudumbasri mission and then uh, we trained a lot of women farmers to become the resource persons and now the government statistics says that more, actually 5 lakh women farmers under this kudumbasri mission are doing farming and that too mostly organic farming because they and they do local uh, value addition local marketing so it has become a, a very successful project under the government also and uh, we also continue to work with uh, women farmers and also especially among the adivasi the tribal farmers now uh, in two districts in kerala where we focus uh, on two uh, kind of people one is the women farmers and second is the youth farmers the young farmers you said in an article that women were more open and sensitive to the issues of pesticides and safety of food can you explain why 
uh, actually that is my ex- personal experience also the women uh, because i have done a lot of uh, studies on pesticide in different parts of the state in kerala so i have uh, interviewed uh, both uh, men farmers and uh, women farmers uh, especially on pesticides use uh, so then uh, from the conversations uh, what i understood was that Uh, the men farmers even though uh, they understand when i when you talk they understand that uh, pesticides have some problems but then they are not ready to accept that uh, they can uh, they, that it is the change is needed they tell that no once uh, without pesticides we cannot do cultivation we cannot produce enough that was always the answer from the male farmers but always you know that is my personal experience always when you talk to the women farmers they always they also uh, because they are they in their husbands you now their families their parents or fathers you know they are all into the conventional chemical farming but still they feel they they understand and they tell you that you no know, in reply they tell you that yes pesticides are problematic and we have to change and our experience also you know we started with the women farmers although there are so many male farmers around in that area where we worked they were all in a sense uh, when we be- when we began they were all very uh, kind of contemptuous or questioning uh, and also they keep telling among themselves on the also with their wives you know in their families that no it will not be a success no they will uh, leave it after some time or without pesticides we cannot grow that was always the male uh, say- saying of uh, organic farming but then women always uh, somehow accept so i think that you no know, when i used to have discussions with the women also some of my friends the uh, also some scientist also uh, and uh, we all feel that women uh, one is the impact of pesticides is more on women and children and uh, we have we uh, kerala experienced a very big tragedy uh, due to a pesticide called endosulfan and uh, me- there were lot of media stories on this issue in the early beginning of 2000 2003 that period so the pictures no actually the have made a lot of impact on women and that is also i think especially the impact on children uh, so that is i think one reason uh, which helped in a sense for women to understand better and uh, naturally i think women are more organic because the for them more than the money or the economics uh, their uh, their fund foundation or their uh, they work uh, based the um, they like uh, they want to connect they want to make relationship they want to take care of that is i think very basic to women i do not know whether it is biological or upbringing that that is making us or making women more kind of uh, peaceful or in a sense organic thinking that is there in most women that is my so i think that is one reason uh, that uh, because taking care of the child you know that, that that is the way they say they take care of the seeds they take care of the soil so very in a sense it is very non violent Uh, so that but maybe that i do not know there is no I, i i don't have any scientific answer to this but this is my experience and many other people many other uh, many group many other people in uh, nationally working with the women farmers they also tell us tell the same would you say that um this connection to the nature and the other people uh this uh, way to take care of it maybe we could draw a line between uh, organic agriculture and empowerment of women in india is there a specific dynamic yes very much very much because uh, what i know the, the difference between conventional farming and organic farming is that in conventional farming actually the through that by introduction of conventional the chemical based farming what happened in india was that the farmers lost their knowledge system the traditional knowledge system in the traditional farming they actually they were even now there are farmers who are traditional farmers who have that knowledge especially the tribal farmers and the very poor farmers who are still continuing with their traditional farming you see a lot of knowledge in them on biodiversity on the climate on soil no even just by seeing the color of the soil they will tell you what whether it is good or bad i know like that that knowledge so but through the conventional farming agriculture the farmers lost this kind of knowledge system so in agroecology or in organic farming natural farming what is happening is that 
by the shift to the or this kind of farming system the, no, a lot of knowledge is generated in the farming community okay so and and actually the so right now we say that organic farming is knowledge intensive and secondly if you look at the the entire farming sector 70% of the farmers are women farmers uh, but what happened in the during the conventional agriculture development is that all the technologies you now the policies and technologies were focusing on men farmers not on women farmers so in the sense the women farmers became kind of laborers workers kind of because there is no need for their knowledge uh, and also there is no technology which is suitable for women farmers but in organic farming what is happening is that this is getting revived so there are the only thing is that there is the mainstream research they they still lack this i think this understanding and then the tech you know, on the technology side whether it is machineries for example we have generally look if you look at the machineries they are the very big kind of tractors and combine harvesters and things like that but for women farmers they need a different kind of tools and equipments which is uh, i think now that has to be developed at the grassroots level with the help of uh, local te- technicians and all so but another thing is that especially on the ki- on the side of seeds in, in india we say that women are the seed keepers they were the seed keepers and now in the organic farming what we see the coming back of that habit because in the conventional farming you don't keep the seeds you buy every time every season you buy from outside either from the public sector seed seed companies or the private seed companies so you don't have to keep seeds so that that is that culture is lost but when you introduce organic farming that is getting developed the women come back to the seed keeping and then seed, maintaining the seed banks uh, cultivating the diversity and so the coming the, the so everything in a sense and it is this is getting a lot of uh, visibility so this women get a lot of visibility women get a lot of access to uh, urban people or urban uh, organizations and they can share their experience they can share their expertise so they get a lot of respect in back and more than that they are also now economically gaining because there there are federations of uh, women farmers groups in, in um, uh, some states like andhra pradesh where they are also getting into marketing value addition and marketing so all these are in a sense empowering the women farmers so you're saying that um the empowerment of women wouldn't have been possible or that much possible uh if they had been dealing with conventional agriculture yes great <laughs> thank you um and what would be your best inspiring message to motivate people adopting day-to-day individual actions to reach sustainable development uh i think listen to mother earth understand how we are all connected respect farmers especially small and marginal farmers who give us food and keep us alive even during this pandemic and support them we have to understand that our food security is in the hands of these small and marginal farmers and not corporates so we our choice actually decide our future Ecocert would like to thank Usha Sulapani for having taken part in the celebration of its 30th anniversary In the next episodes we will talk about terrestrial and marine biodiversity try to clarify all the issues of life protection establish the not so obvious link between organic farming and women's empowerment try to understand how the UN SDGs can inspire its company's CSR strategies but also how standards lead sustainable development we'll go to the heart of Europe and from India to Africa in short 10 episodes to determine the best way to meet the challenges of climate change with famous experts. See you soon for a new episode.